Good afternoon and welcome to the Midday News. Here's what we have in the bulletin. Tragedy in St. Catherine. Husband and wife murdered. Their son is in custody. More reactions to fines under the Jamaica Teaching Council bill. And later in sports, the 24th edition of the Winter Olympics is underway in Beijing, China, following the opening ceremony. I'm Giovanni Dennis and here are the details. A man is in custody following a double murder in Portmore St. Catherine early this morning. The suspect is the son of the deceased couple. Sandy Williams reports. Residents of Watson Grove in Portmore St. Catherine woke up to a murder scene and a heavy police presence in their community Friday morning. A husband and wife, 69-year-old Cecil Ramsey, a minister of religion, and 55-year-old Phyllis Ramsey, acting vice principal of St. Andrew Preparatory School, were killed in their home. According to the police, the suspect is believed to be the son of the couple. Superintendent of Police in Charge of Crime for the Area 5 Division, Rory Martin, says the police were responding to an accident in the Phoenix Park community when they were alerted to the double murder in Watson Grove. Both were found deceased with stab wounds. Currently, the suspect, who believed to be the son of the couple, is in custody. And investigators are setting the scene and gathering all necessary information that we have at this time. Residents say the incident has left them in shock. Everybody's just shocked, just really, you know, sad by what is happening and we're trying our best to deal with this loss because, I mean, nobody wants something like this to happen in their family. It's a very sad thing because um, the young man that they said did this is a very good friend of mine who always comes by me to, to talk about things that he is always doing, things like um, social work, for his school and things like that. They're nice guys, so, you know, this is just a shock to me. They describe the family as good people. Nice family, go to church every Sunday. That's what I know of them. They are good neighbors. So Ramsey, yeah, they speak to us over the fence. Mrs. Ramsey speaks to us over the fence. Good neighbors, people who, you know, I'd say the average Jamaican family, in our terms, they're cool. So no problem, I don't hear no shouting over there, no quarreling. Nice family. The police believe the son may have been suffering from mental challenges. They said that he has been showing signs of depression of recent times and of such um, we believe that he snapped and caused harm resulting in death to his parents. To me he was showing a few mental signs but as I said I'm not a professional so all I know of him is that um, he's a good, a good person, real nice guy. Always doing things to help people so this is just a shock to me. The suspect is now in police custody. Superintendent Martin describes the incident as very unfortunate as he explains that despite the efforts of the police to curtail crime, this latest double murder was unpredictable. He's appealing to residents to report cases where persons have been behaving strange in order to prevent a repeat of the incident. All efforts we have been, we have been making in the municipality to curtail crime, a crime like this, we just couldn't see it coming. I would just ask that family members and citizens who might know of or see persons acting in a manner that is not normal to inform us, let us intervene, let us have intervention before it leads to a situation like that which occurred this morning. Sandy Williams, TVJ News. In the meantime, a man who was listed as one of the St. Catherine South Police most wanted is now in custody. Head of the St. Catherine South Police Senior Superintendent Christopher Phillips says 31-year-old Damien Henry, otherwise called Devil, surrendered to the police yesterday in the company of his attorney. He's to be questioned in relation to a charge of murder. For the 2013 stabbing murder of Travis Clahar uh, down there in Olaba. So we're happy that he decided to do the correct thing. We have nine other persons who we um, published recently as wanted, and we would love for them to you know, do the same thing because we're going to be doing a lot of operations around these persons. He was among the scores of wanted men listed by the police high command last week. Now two other men from St. James, 36-year-old Gerald McNaughton and 23-year-old Fitzroy Jones were charged this week with crimes including murder. 
More reactions this afternoon to the fines under the Jamaica Teaching Council Bill, which seeks to regulate the teaching profession. There is support for the bill from the Jamaica Association of Principals of Secondary Schools, but at least one primary school principal is raising concerns. Herman Green reports. Teachers could be fined up to $500,000 if they are teaching without a license. It follows the tabling of the Jamaica Teaching Council Bill by Education Minister Favel Williams in Parliament recently. President of the Jamaica Association of Principals for Secondary Schools, Linvern Wright, has since welcomed the move. <laughs> As a teacher, I just need to ensure that you're registered. And, and, and if, if, if we have people of integrity, I don't see if you're not registered and you will practice not being registered and you're fine. You should have an issue with that. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, I have no issues with that. I, I, I think if it is that I don't get registered and I go practice as anybody who does something outside of the law, you have to just face the consequences. But not all stakeholders are seeing eye to eye on the matter. The principal of Russell Primary School, Owen Speed, has taken issue with the fine. When you look at the criminalization part of it, mm -hmm. it's, 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 it's a little bit going over the top. Mr. Speed believes the government should consider other penalties. If you, if you want to lock up people, arrest people uh, for that, then, then it means that you are going to last resort before you go to the other uh, to the starting point. So, mm -hmm. so a suspension um, could, could work uh, for a period of time and so on. Why, why are you going to that extreme before you, you deal with the other softer approaches? Herman Green, TVJ News. To other news, following heavy rains in St. Mary earlier this week, opposition leader Mark Golding and Member of Parliament for Central St. Mary, Dr. Maria Guy, toured the flooded areas on Thursday. Mr. Golding noted that in areas where flooding is prone, businesses will find it difficult to secure insurance and will therefore need assistance. And the government has to help them, has to get them back on their feet because the economy of this town and this region is going to be terribly badly affected if they don't get some assistance. So we're really calling on the government to really try to give the small business community in particular, you know, the opportunity, some grants, some loans with the extended moratorium so that they can get back in business and, you know, people can get back employment and the town can bounce back from this terrible, terrible disaster. This is the worst flooding they've had. Dr. Guy said the National Works Agency had plans for river training, among other things, for Port Maria. He noted that areas where work took place were not affected by the floods. So we are asking the National Works Agency as a matter of urgency and as a priority to, to look into this, to look for all those detailed drawings that they have, to, to ensure that the infrastructure is put in place. And second, as the leader said, to call on government to make that investment. Dr. Guy added that the parish will need major state interventions and a sustainable solution to prevent a recurrence. And it's now time for a break here on the Midday News, but please stay with us. We'll have much more when you return. Welcome back. We're continuing the news. Justice Minister Delroy Chuck is warning justices of the peace to be careful of unscrupulous people who try to get them to sign documents with the wrong information. Mr. Chuck, who was speaking at a Justices of the Peace function in St. Elizabeth recently, said this practice says this is a practice rather that continues and the JPs must be aware. As you heard last time, land that don't belong to them and come to you with some of the best information, ID, which oftentimes is for the and show you that they're John Brown and ask them to identify them. If you don't know the person, do not identify them. Meanwhile, Mr. Chuck is once again calling for more justices of the peace. He says persons in communities are still complaining about wanting to sign documents, but they don't have a JP to do so. There are other JPs having been commissioned. They only want to state yourself for profiling, and you can't find them. This is not about profile and status. This is about service. This is about 
understanding and consciousness of the demands and needs of your fellow citizens. Over in Gordon House, the Senate is now debating the government's bill to postpone the local government election. The bill was passed in the House of Representatives last week. Local Government Minister Desmond McKenzie listed political disunity while celebrating 60 years of independence and the COVID pandemic among the reasons. Leader of Government Business Kamina Johnson-Smith tabled the bill in the Senate this morning. Opposition members argued against the move, noting the Barbados election last month. Now, Senator Johnson-Smith also listed the possible impact on face-to-face -face school. Again, it would not be prudent to hold the elections at this time, uh, given the possible disruptions and noting that many schools operate as polling divisions and counting centers. Just at this point in time, it just does not seem to be the best approach in the interest of Jamaica. In fact, when Barbados called their election, the data showed that around nine countries had called the election during this COVID period. So COVID I don't buy. Face-to-face -face school would be damaged by one day of election. I don't buy that either. A bill to postpone the local government elections to February this year was passed by both houses last year. The current bill seeks to postpone the elections again until February 2023. And it's now time for the Business Minute with Cody and Barrett. In the financial world, the National Commercial Bank NCB Financial Group has reported a dip in profit for its first quarter, which ended December 2021. NCB's net profit was $5.37 billion, down from $5.85 billion during the same period in 2020. NCB's revenues also declined. Earnings from banking and investment activities fell by 2%. To $24.7 billion. However, the group's insurance income increased by 8% to $34 billion. And in business internationally, Meta Platforms, the company formerly known as Facebook, just had its worst trading day in its history as a public company. The company's shares closed down more than 26% Thursday, shaving off nearly $240 billion from its market value. Not only did Meta report a rare and worse than expected profit decline during the final three months of last year, it laid out a series of challenges to its core advertising business and revealed for the first time just how much money it's losing on its shift to the metaverse. The company also reported a slight but striking decline in daily active Facebook users in the United States and Canada from the prior quarter. Coming up in the Business Review this Sunday, no missed opportunity for a local plant-based skincare manufacturer who is tapping into the multi-million dollar industry. And that's it for the Business Minute this week. I'm Cody Ann Barrett. And it's now time for the top regional and international stories with Sandy Williams. In the region, in Bermuda, police have launched a murder investigation the first of the year after an off-duty prison officer died following an attempt to break up a fight between two men. Damon Bell, 49, stepped in to break up the scuffle near a sports field in Hamilton Parish, a 15-minute drive from the capital on Wednesday afternoon. Bell suffered head injuries as he tried to act as a peacemaker and died later in hospital. A 46-year-old man has been arrested in connection with the incident. Shadow National Security Minister Michael Dunkley said Bell's death was a tragedy. Bermuda recorded seven murders last year. On the international scene, more than 95 million Americans are under winter weather warnings or advisories, and the number of cancelled flights is growing. The sprawling winter storm crawled through Wednesday and Thursday, delivering rain, floods, heavy snow, and ice, creating hazardous travel conditions throughout the impacted states. Snow-covered roads leading to at least two deaths in New Mexico, while a likely tornado in Alabama caused at least one death and several injuries. Power outages across at least seven states left people in the dark. On Thursday, more than 6,400 flights across the country were cancelled, and thousands of flights already cancelled as of Friday morning. More than 80 million people in the 
northeast remain in the path of this destructive storm. And those were the top regional and international stories. I'm Sandy Williams. And just before the break, we go now to the latest on the coronavirus as Jamaica continues to see a decrease in the number of people hospitalized due to COVID-19. According to the Ministry of Health, 420 people are now in hospital with the virus. 48 of the patients are severely ill, while 16 are critically ill. 267 new COVID-19 cases were also reported in the last 24 hours from 1,746 samples. Now this brings the overall case count to 125,000 517. The positivity rate now stands at 24.6%. Ten more people have died from the respiratory illness in Jamaica, increasing the death toll to 2,687. At the same time, 295 more people have recovered from the virus, pushing the recovery count to 70,909. There are now 5,206 active COVID-19 cases on the island. And we now head to a quick break. When we come back, Renardo Brown will have the Midday Sports. Welcome back. It's now time for your Midday Sports. Jasmine Fenletta Victorian and debutant Deb Benjamin Alexander, that's Benjamin Alexander, were Jamaica's flag bearers as the 24th edition of the Winter Olympics officially got underway in Beijing, China earlier today. Almost 3,000 athletes from 91 nations will compete across the Games. The International Olympic Committee, the IOC, has been criticized for awarding the Games to China because of the country's alleged human rights abuses. Just as in Tokyo six years ago, there were no paying spectators, friends or family present in the stands, although there were diplomats and team members applauding the athletes. Fenletta Victorian and Benjamin Alexander are among Jamaica's six-member team. Victorian will compete in the women's monobomb, while Benjamin Alexander will be the country's lone representative in alpine skiing. Jamaica will also compete in the two-man and four-man sled events. And TVJ Sports understands that there will be an adjustment to the schoolboy cricket season as the Inter-Secondary Inter School Sports Association, ISA, pushed to resume the competition for the first time since the COVID-19 pandemic. With the successful staging of the recently concluded ISA schoolboy football season, ISA will look to resume cricket among other sporting disciplines in the coming weeks. However, TVJ Sports understands that as opposed to the usual three age group competitions for cricket, only two will be played this year. After a meeting on Tuesday, it was decided that only under 19 and under 15 competitions will be held instead of the usual under 14, 16 and under 19 competitions. The under 15 competition was decided on to give students who missed the under 14 season in 2021 an opportunity to play at that level. And West Indies and Jamaican cricketer Dean Smith, who had originally listed his base price in the highest bracket of the Indian Premier League, which was a two core, he has adjusted that now to one. Now, the 25-year-old big-hitting all-rounder made a splash in the CPL and more recently the T10 League and in white ball cricket for the West Indies. He was a net bowler for Calcutta Knight Riders last season, along with left-arm finger spinner Akil Hussain, but is yet to make it to an IPL franchise main squad. And led by Trey Young's 43 points, the Atlanta Hawks ended the Phoenix Suns' 11-game winning run with a 124-111 win in the NBA last night. The Suns led the Western Conference, but the Golden State Warriors are just a win-off after beating the Sacramento Kings 126-114. Clay Thompson top scored for the Warriors in San Francisco with 23 points, including seven three-pointers. Elsewhere, Anthony Davis saw a shot strike the rim with a final play of the night as the Los Angeles Lakers were beaten by the Los Angeles Clippers in a thrilling encounter. Davis notched 30 points for the Lakers. In other matches on the night, the Toronto Raptors capitalized on the secured a 127-120 win over Eastern Conference leaders, the Chicago Bulls. And the Miami Heat ended a three-game losing streak by beating the San Antonio Spurs 112-95 and the Minnesota Timberwolves earned a third win in a row, overcoming the Detroit Pistons in a 128-117 win. And that's it for your Midday Sports Report. I'm Renardo Brown. Giovanni, it's back to you. 
Thanks, Renardo. And that's it indeed for the Midday News. I'm Giovanni Dennis. Join us at 7 for Primetime News. On behalf of the news, sports and production teams, have a good afternoon.